Hello everybody. In today's video, I want to take a look at taking a abstract ERD and make it a little bit more concrete. That is going from just our field names to starting to give them what keys they're going to be as well as what data types are going to be. So let's take a look at our previous example that we have here. You see us build this out over several videos. Now we want to simply convert these. Okay. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, the easiest thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select an entity, in this case, orders. And if you notice on my right hand side, I have a little panel that comes up and I want to choose, you know what, instead of just this style entity, I'm going to change its shape. And I have every shape that I have over on my left hand panel. I'm going to choose the bottom one, which is my most complex. And you'll notice it comes up and now has key, my field values and type. Now, some of these are a little bit hard to read simply because they're taking up too much space. So how do we fix this? Well, I'm going to grab my sizing handle and just stretch it to the right. So I can make this fit. I'm going to take the one on the left, stretch it. Now you notice that everything fits just as I'd expect. You'll notice that I have a little box where the line that separates between my entity name as well as my columns. I can adjust these left and right to give them the right size I need to. So for example, for order ID, I'm going to come over here, double click on where it says key and type in PK. That's for my primary key. I'm going to leave order ID. That's my field name. And I'm going to choose a type and I can choose something like number, which is a little bit generic. I don't like that. I'm going to choose integer. That gives me a better value. Now the question is, what should my field names be? Well, my field types are going to define based upon what database I'm going into. So there's different types of values for different types of fields depending upon the database we use. Some cases might call this int. Others might have both int and integer and they might be alias to one another. In other cases, I might have something like an auto number. That's an actual data type that I can use. I also might use something different than a number. It doesn't have to be an integer to be a primary key. So I could, for example, be looking at something like maybe a GUID. And so all those different things I have to know about based upon what my target database is going to be. For my customer ID, I'm going to come over here, type in FK for foreign key, because this is a key that's going to be referenced based upon my customer ID. That comes from another table that makes it a foreign key. Once again, the type is going to be integer. My date ordered is not necessarily going to be based upon a key. So I'm going to delete that. Hit tab over date. So I'm going to choose date time. Product total. Once again, no key. I could choose your currency. I might choose a decimal value. So I might say something like decimal eight comma two. This would be something like you might find, for example, in MySQL and how they define decimal places. This is often how you use currency for MySQL. And then we have status. Now status is going to be an interesting thing. How am I going to look at this? Could I do it as an enumerated type? Possibly. Could I do it as a lookup from another table? Also possibly. However, this is not defined here, so I'm not going to do that. I could have it as a text string. Or I can have as a single character and the single character is used to reference another value. So it's very important to know how am I going to use this? In this case, what I'm going to simply look at is something like varchar and then I'm going to specify 16 characters to give me my value. And this is how I have one simple table where I can go in and define this literally using my keys and my data types. This is going to be very important for when I want to export this out, if I want to export it so that I can bring it into work inside of an actual database. We'll show you how to do that in our next video. So keep watching and looking out for that video coming out.